Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, January 11th, 1981. Host Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. Miriam? Miriam, is that you? Are you in here? Bartle! Oh, thank God you're safe. You've been very sick. Bartle, how did they find you? Oh, Jesus, what would they do to you? Has they hurt you at all? I told them nothing. All they do every day is ask about you and that artifact. But I didn't tell them anything. Nothing. I know you didn't, Miriam. But how are you? You aren't hurt. Not badly, no. I'm fine. Good. We need to get the message out to Oscar. Somehow. We, we need to tell him where... Very interesting footage, Eileen. This is Germany, you said. World War II? Most of the memories I've been able to access come from a period where Miriam was imprisoned by Nazis in Cologne. Miriam. Is she still alive? No, she was my husband's... My ex-husband's mother. She passed away about five years ago. Well, she was spirited. An impressive lady. Definitely. And the man, Bartle. He made reference to an artifact. Any idea what that is? My team is looking into that, but it's not our first priority. We still need... It is now. Really? You must have other recordings of this woman. Are there any other mentions of this artifact I should know about? Half a dozen or so, yes. What's this about? You have questions, I understand that. I don't have answers for you. Not right now, but I do have money. And if you get me those recordings and bring me any other artifact references you find, then I will triple your operating budget for as long as I can. Triple my budget? My God, what is this? 9 a.m. Monday morning, my office. We have a lot to discuss. But Lillian, I don't... Have a good weekend, Mrs. Bach. Fantastic work. Hello, this is Carl. Hi, it's Eileen. Hey, how are you? Good. Busy. Cold. The winter's been terrible. Uh Well, he's only coming for a month. He'll live, and I'll be so busy he won't have to worry about his mother bothering him. Ah, uh, still working 12-hour days. I should move a bed into my lab. Look, if you're too busy, Seamus can stay with me. No, no, I want to see him. We'll have fun. You're not too busy to be a mom and a genius. Of course not. His flight lands at 8.15 p.m. tomorrow night. You'll be there? Of course, 8.15. P.m. Let him know you'll be there. Thanks, Carl. I need to run. I'm sorry. Take care. You too. Ah, Eileen. Didn't see you come in. I'm not interrupting. No, it's fine. The subject is unconscious. He's traipsing around 18th century New Orleans right now. In the memories of a woman. That must feel odd. How long has he been under? 83 minutes. Whoa. It's average. What can I do for you? I just wanted to... To thank you for sending Lillian to see me. She came away very impressed. There. You see, all these bureaucrats need is a little glimpse of our secrets every so often. They like to feel like they're still in charge. Lillian is most definitely in charge. She just tripled my budget. Tripled? Christ, Eileen. You must have discovered who killed Kennedy. <laughs> well, she heard something on one of my tapes that interested her. Something about an artifact. Very vague. But it was enough. An artifact? What sort of artifact? Jesus, get him out of there! Get him out! Oh, my God. It'll kill him! He's not decoupled! He's having a fucking seizure! Power down! Now! Heart rate 170! Power down! Now! Eileen, Warren here. I was all ready to apologize for the late call, but you seem to be away. Maybe with your son. Uh, listen, since the unfortunate incident with Subject One, there's been a lot of dire talk around the office about my Animus project, about shutting it down, about it being unsafe. Typical top brass bullshit. 
And if they shut me down, then your surrogate initiative goes away too. I'm sure you're already well aware of that. Well, let me be the first to reassure you. This will not happen. I will not let them take this from me, from us. I will not let one death of an undiagnosed epileptic, I should add. I will not let this destroy the decades of incredible research done by our predecessors and the five years I've spent perfecting the Animus. There's still more work to be done and countless rewards to be reaped. So I wanted you to be the first to know. I have decided to volunteer myself as my second subject. I am convinced that the Animus is perfectly safe, provided I stay within the boundaries of my own ancestral bloodline. Next week I plan to prove this by staying a full four hours in the Animus. I would be grateful if you and your team would monitor my progress. And after this necessary but ridiculous proof of concept, I give you my word that I will work closely with you to solve your outstanding problems. Your surrogate initiative is a bold idea, and I do believe it is the future of the Animus Project. But while we have the Animus itself, I do not want to waste precious opportunities to prove its safety. I'll see you in the office on Monday. Goodbye. Our initial research into the life of Ratana Gaiden focused on a period spanning his late teens to his early 30s, but our researchers came away unimpressed by his calm and stoic demeanor, with occasional flashes of extreme anger. This was not the sort of leading man we felt comfortable endorsing. We decided, therefore, to delve into his early childhood, with the hope that scenes of pre-colonial America might hold some appeal. As you can see here, there is a certain naive charm and innocence to this young boy. Unfortunately, our researchers found this young man's story deeply problematic as well. For one, the omnipresence of the Mohawk culture lacks the balance necessary to tell the true story of America. And secondly, the Mohawk language would certainly be an issue for most of our audience. We therefore feel that although Ratana Tankon's early life would be of some interest to our more educated viewers, it's unlikely that his story would appeal on a broader scale, being too foreign, as it were, to normal audiences. Our team recommends we pass on this property.